Hundreds of laps over thousands of miles. Every drop of fuel squeezed for every last ounce of performance in the hunt for a BSB championship that just wasn't to be. The better man can win in a race, set a pole and ride through agony just to score a point or two, but it's the very best man that comes out on top. And in 2021, it simply wasn't the team's turn to be that best man. But that won't stop Glenn and the team from giving this last round absolutely everything. When going out on a high and going out on a high side are separated by next to nothing, you'd think at this stage of the season, it would make sense to just ride around waving. This final round is the perfect demonstration of the unrelenting pursuit of excellence. Whether it's Glenn and the boys in the BSB class, or Tom and the potential Superstock Championship that could unlock the next step in his career. Welcome to the final episode. Let's go beyond the blade one last time. We're going to join the team in their last ride of the 2021 BSB Championship, but before we do, let's take a look back at how Japanese riders Ryo Mizunu and Takumi Takahashi fared in their first season. I think it's only fair to qualify some of the struggles that Ryo has faced, and I've mentioned them before. New language, new hometown, new friends or no friends, they're all at home new food, new gym, everything is new before we get to the bits that matter the most. New tires, new bike, new circuits. So there's a lot for him to take in. So my first question, Rio, is now that you've had a season of BSB, yep. what do you think is the biggest difference? British circuit is very different to Japanese circuit. Yeah. So very narrow yeah. and big jump yeah. and many blind corner. Yeah. So not overtake corner yeah. a lot. So, but Japanese circuit, every corner overtake. Yeah, yeah so because fast more, and flowing. Yeah, and okay. more wide, yeah. yes, more easy. Yeah. But all British rider, is if one space, they go. Yeah, yeah, yeah more aggressive yeah. and more crazy. What do you think is the, the best thing? about the fire blade that you enjoy the most? Uh, this fire blade top speed is very fast and very powerful. So if fast circuit is very strong. Like uh, Donington? Yeah, Donington, Silverstone, yeah. Snetato. Yeah. yeah, it's very good performance. Yeah. yeah. So if you could change just one thing yeah. and you have the choice, change circuits, change traction control or change tires, which do you think would make you faster to change first? Change circuit. Change circuit? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Pirelli tire is now more understand. Yeah. And you no know, traction control is more step by step. Yeah. But the on the circuit is still very difficult. Yeah, so very narrow, jump, really. Yeah. Real, thanks very much. Yeah. Good luck today. Thank you. Thank you. Now is a chance to catch up with Takumi and ask about this season in particular, um, the biggest difference with BSB compared to Japanese championships and other championships. イギリスのサーキットはレイアウトもそうですけど、トラックコンディションがバンピーだったり、高低差がすごい多かったりで、自分にとってはすごい難しいシーズンになりました。I'm with um, Honda Fireblades. What is your favorite, the favorite thing for you with your Fireblade? やはり新しい新型になってからパワーがすごい出るようになってるので、高い回転数でのパワーはすごい感じます。And just one last question, Takumi. If you could change one thing, tires, add traction control, or change circuit layout, which one would you change first? Takumi, thank you very much, mate. Thank you. Cheers.
So if you're watching this, clearly you're a BSB fan. Clearly, we all know who's already won that championship. For us and the team, this weekend is all about Tom Neve and that Superstock championship. Will he win? Won't he win? All that drama, it all comes down to here at Brands Hatch. Let's find out. Coming into the weekend after Donington Park, I gave myself the best chance with a 22 point lead in the championship. But until you've crossed the line and got the job done, like it's not over. I still had work to do. From 2020 to 2021, we've really stepped up a level. We learned a hell of a lot last year, and having crashed out for the chance of getting a championship last year, I learned what not to do in going into the last round. I mean, everything happens for a reason. Obviously, I was gutted last year with what happened, but it taught me a valuable life experience, and, and in this job, that's what it's all about. I think Tom has developed and evolved. You know, we go back, we've worked together for the last two, three years, and uh, I think Tom's been able to improve on his weaknesses and build his strengths. I've seen he made a step in the way that he think or he behave during the race, but because every, every race is different. We learn every race something new and it's what we do. Just try to apply what the experience gives us. I'm going to ask you about it. I know you just said you don't want to talk about it and uh, you don't want to think about it, but what is the plan you play safe or...? It's one of them. We've just said we'll see how free practice goes and obviously qualify, and, and if, we're, if we're up the front, then it makes our life easier. And that will sort of dictate how I need to handle a race, I suppose. If, um, if I qualify badly and I've got to dig in and get in a, in a safety buffer zone, then I'm going to have to pull my finger out. Well, this weekend has been a little bit not like we expect when we came because we thought that the weather will be more stable, but yeah, it has been good. You know, every session has been good, improving. The bike was always in the direction that he liked. All weekend I'd felt really, really good. In the dry conditions, we were second fastest. We topped FP3. I was feeling like my old self. I actually got my fastest ever lap on a fire blade around this track, which was a huge step from where we was last year, where we was earlier on in the season when we came here for round three. So yes, we put the bike in a correct place, but the weather in Kuali was a little bit unstable and yes, things happen. I think qualifying in the Superstock, you know, it's the same for everybody. Unfortunately, it's a much shorter session than a Superbike. And if you're starting with a wet track, you know, clearly you have to go out with wet, but it's calling that time when to come in and switch to what we call, not slicks, but treaded tires for the Superstock. Probably we need to change. At least the rear. There's no one to blame in what happened in qualifying. It was just one of them things. It was a wet track that was drying rapidly. And with about five minutes to go, everyone was coming in, putting a dry tire in and going back out. And the lads that did that were the lads that were on the front five, six rows. We came in and we had a minute and 30 left on the clock. It's coming. I come up to the line, I thought, I've got this, I've got this, and one second from crossing the line, the chequered flag come up in front of me, and I went from the front two or three rows to drop into 19th. It was so unfortunate. But that's the way it goes sometimes. You've just got to be absolutely on your A-game all the time. In one lap, mate. Where do I end up? 18th, I think. What the f***? If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. It's raining now. 19. Yeah, you're going to make six places up, and these two are going to win. 
Yeah, the snap. You don't think you can make six places up from 19th? I think you can do that in lap one. I know what I can do with the dry this week, and I feel so good, and it's just not like I should have been on the front row. Yeah, but it didn't work out like that. Not like, not how I want to end the year. Well, well, going to end the year with number one player. I know, I don't know. You know, it's definitely greasier than they all anticipated. Yeah. Yeah, look at the lap times in the first two laps. Well, this bike's going well, he's happy with it. You know, no failures, no mistakes. Big mistake. No, but no mistakes in the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. got to... I understand how he feels. Pardon? Yeah. I understand yeah. how he feels. You know. But it's no good um, beating yourself. You no, know. no, 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 no. No, no you don't because have we've, to got to, we've got to be positive now. Yeah, yeah. We've got to look to the positivity side, look what we can extract from it, yeah. look at what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to achieve from here is winning the championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So winning the championship means that we need to be in 11th, 12th place. Um, yeah, well, if you're that's 12th, you're fine. Yeah, that's it. So it's like say, but you yeah. get to 11th or 10th, it's his, irrelevant yeah. what they do. And that's all he's got to have in his mindset is that he can go from 19th to 10th, you know, he's come from back of the grid to winning the race at Donington. You know, so he, can, he knows what he's capable of doing through that pack. For Tom, you know, like I say, starting the grid from 19th place, he clearly knew that he had to be in 13th place or above. And certainly if McConnell or Olsen were leading the race, he just needed to secure enough points so it was impossible for them to beat him in the championship. 68, 3 and 75 are the potential championship uh, takers here in this one. But very much at the moment in favour of Tom Lee. If Billy wins the race, then as far as Tom is concerned, it doesn't matter whether Billy wins the race or Alex wins the race, a 13th place would be good enough for the title for Tom Lee. And that would be a perfect ending for a season the last year saw so him finish in the up in the National Stock 1000s. Enjoy this, Tom. All right. All the hard work, all the effort you put in, all year. It didn't really phase me too much. There's no pressure when you're there. I, kn I knew how fast I was because we had FP3 after qualifying this weekend and we were fastest. Like, I, I knew what I was capable of in the dry. So it's a case of just keeping out of trouble on the first few laps and then just chipping away because the, the numbers don't lie. Champion elect number 68, Tom Neve, heading row number seven. The fairy tale ending would be to win the championship having got a podium, but there's no way I was going to even risk that at the expense of the championship. We did what we needed to do, and that's what it's all about. Taylor McKenzie diving into turn number one. Daddy, Chrissy Rouse, Chrissy Rouse is already out of it. Chrissy Rouse, the outgoing champion. Can you tell him where McKenzie is? He knows that if he's a team, he's safe. Tom knew from the beginning what he should do. He knew when he was 13 during the race that he was okay there. 11th is fine. I scared a little bit because he started to push a little bit more and he was pushing like he does when he feels himself. Come up to the line, I saw the championship pit board out and I was thinking, there's one more lap left here, like why are they giving me a lap early, like that's, that's just going to tempt fate that is. And then I looked up after seeing a pit board and it was checkered flag so I was just so relieved. It didn't sink in until I got around turn one and it was just like the biggest relief. My brother come past me, which is like a real special moment, being able to share that immediately with him, their emotions, and uh, I'm not going to lie, I had a few tears. Oh my God, that is mega. I'd laid in bed like last night, I didn't sleep a wink, just thinking about what it might feel like and then telling myself to stop thinking about it because I, I didn't want to curse myself or anything. I'm just so
so over the moon and it's not just a championship for me, it's a championship for the entire team and I'm just so proud to have been able to do that with Honda. It's my dream team and I'm just so proud to be able to do it for everyone. So Tom, it, it feels to me like kind of a blink of an eye when I joined your journey to being the 2021 Superstock Champion. It's February 21, we're in Laos, I'm unveiling the team colours for the year. But it's actually a three year journey that you've been on to become the champion today. Does it feel right now anything like you thought it might? It feels ten times better than what I ever anticipated and after finishing runner-up last year, crashing out with the chance of being champion last year and it going wrong. To clinch it this year has just been the sweetest feeling ever and honestly it's been a hell of a journey. We've had a lot of sweat, blood and tears, broken bones, things just haven't gone my way and yeah, yeah. a lot goes on behind the scenes that no one sees. So to get it over the line this year in what's been probably the toughest season in Superstock 1000 is just like the biggest weight off my shoulders. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just so grateful for Honda taking, taking a liberty on me back in 2019 when I was just a bit of a rough stone really. Hadn't really achieved too much, showing a, a little glimmer um, and was far from anywhere near ready to win a championship. But they, they took a chance on me and with Harv and Neil and Marcus and the entire team, and, my, my family, my uncle, there's so many key players and I, I can't list them all because I'll definitely forget people. But. Yeah, it's just such a team effort. It's not a championship for me, it's a championship for everyone. Um, and I'm just so proud to be able to do it with Honda as well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, was it was it last season or this season where you gelled with the new five lane and you thought, you know what, I think I'm, I think I'm a champion on this bike? I gelled with it the minute I rolled out of pit lane. Really? From, um, from 2019 to 2020, we made a huge step. I made a huge step with my physical condition and mental preparation, everything. We just we, we stepped it up a level and we had the new bike as well yeah. and that was a huge step and we was fast from the get-go. We won at round one. Yeah yeah. And um, but yeah but it was we still had work to do. Last year we was nearly there but we wasn't quite there. This year we've been able to step it up another notch and um, and get the championship which we wanted. Um, so I've worked every day for this moment and it is yeah just such a big relief honestly i've just i'm speechless to be honest i don't know where you're going to find a home for that ginormous trophy i'm gonna have to i'm definitely gonna have to find a special room for that one i think and get a bit of a cabinet going because yeah it's a hell of a step that is for me it's been a turbulent season that's for sure but we did what we came to do and delivered mate. thanks yeah. very much hang on bsb 2021 season, what a roller coaster of a year we've had. You know, the highs and the lows. Uh, we go right the way back to the beginning of the year, delayed start to the season, delayed testing, delayed PR event, and yet we're still able to develop and work with the Fireblade where we have done with BSB and Superstock. Well, it's been a really positive season, but it's also been a roller coaster ride. Uh, it's been quite a short season because of COVID. We didn't get a lot of testing. We've got our Japanese guys over here helping us develop the bike, and we've also got then, you know, Glenn and Tom pushing really hard in both championships. Well, racing is, is very much in the DNA of the brand, and racing to Honda means a lot. And we would like to do our best to be back next year in TT Race. Uh, we have been there since 59, more than 60 years. And for Fireblade, it's where uh, we had the most wins. So for us, TT and Honda are together. For me, at the end of the season, to, to come away as Superstock champion is a, a great result for the team. It's been a roller coaster ride, but it's been very positive. Uh, the market is really buoyant at the moment. You know, there's a lot of customers out there getting on bikes, and, and a huge number of people now at each round. So it's been a really frantic, but a really positive season. So there we go. The end of episode seven of Beyond the Blade and the end of the 2021 BSB Championship. 
The fans are still celebrating back there. And more importantly for us, our two Japanese riders are flying home tomorrow. Tom will be going home and celebrating his Superstock Championship. And Glenn is going under the blade, not beyond the blade, for that operation on his shoulder tomorrow. I hope you've enjoyed the show. I hope you've enjoyed every episode. Let us know in the comments what you think of it and how we can improve the show for you. Thanks very much.